हेलो बायोटेक्निक सब्सक्राइबर्स आई एम बैक विथ सी एस आई आई नेट लाइफ साइंस यूनिट वन इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन विथ देर सोल्यूशन एंड एक्सप्लेनेशन होप यूर एंजॉइंग द सीरीज डू लेट एस नो इन कमेंट सेक्शन इफ यू वॉन्ट एनी पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक टू बी डिस्कस्ड टूडेज टॉपिक इज प्रोटिलिटिक एंजाइम्स एंड प्रोटीन सिक्वेंसिंग यू माइट हैव सीन दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन ऑफन इन सी एस आई एग्जाम पेपर that they will give you certain treatments which are done on the polypeptide chain with different proteolytic enzymes and based on the results that you get upon the treatment uh, what they will ask you what will be the sequence of the entire polypeptide chain so this would be big questions and always from unit uh, from part c only these questions will be asked and yes if you know the basic concept it should not take much time but uh, this will take you some time to understand how the sequencing and the fragment has to be done so let's dig into the details the first question is from csir um, june 2021 exam so this was a list here it's a match of the match of match the following question type of question given below and are the various protein cleaving reagents list 1 and the recognition sites list 2 in the target protein so all you have to do is you have to match uh, what type of sequence they are going to cleave so which one of the following options represents the correct combination of items okay so um how you are going to do here if you know something regarding the cnbr trypsin caspase chymotrypsin they always have a specific type of amino acid where they are going to cleave okay for example cnbr it will always cleave at the c terminal of methionine right so this is how you are going to relate which sequence they are going to make a cut over here so since um, we always write the polypeptide chain from n terminal to c terminal that is why the cnbr will be making a cut always towards the c terminal peptide bond that is over here right so this is how you have to um, relate with it and uh, second is trypsin so trypsin is again a uh, trypsin chymotrypsin both are proteolytic enzymes which make cut in specific places so let me just show you over here this this is the list which is from leninger you can see trypsin will be cleaving at the lysine and arginine again this in bracket c is written means it is it will be cleaving at the c terminal residue of lysine and arginine whereas chymotrypsin this will make a cleavage near the aromatic amino acids which is phenylalanine tryptophan and tyrosine it is going to make a cut at the c terminal peptide bond of this aromatic amino acids as i said cnbr cyanogen bromide it is going to make a cut uh, near the methionine right and uh, apart from that here um, as i already told you caspase some other enzymes will be there so caspase they are actually cysteine proteases right so they will cleave the peptide bond c terminal to aspartic acid residues my you should note this down and thus it will cleave at aspartate alanine site because it is not mentioned over here okay so with that it will be easy to match together already we had seen that cyanogen bromide it would be for methionine then trypsin as we saw it is for the lysine and arginine so b4 right and chymotrypsin it will be for aromatic amino acid where we have this phenylalanine and caspase will be near the aspartate so option correct answer here is option 4 right so while uh, i just told you about trypsin and chymotrypsin let me tell you two more important concepts regarding these two uh, these two enzymes okay so one uh, one of the concept regarding this is that they will they are actually endoproteases that is lysine uh, trypsin and chymotrypsin cyanogen bromide so endoproteases means they will be cleaving in the internal site of the protein so for example if there is a trypsin which is uh, present at the extreme c terminal end let's say it is the second last amino acid after that some more amino acid is there then here the enzyme will not be able to make a cut okay the reason is because these enzymes are specific towards certain amino acids is because they these amino acids will help them to bind to that particular place so in case they are not able to bind over there then obviously they will uh, not be able to cut right so these are endoproteases they will only make a cut in the polypeptide chain um if they are the internal 
residues okay another point is that if any of these uh, residues let's say we are selecting our lysine if the next residue is proline we know that the enzyme will make a cut at the c terminal and if the next residue is proline okay then also the enzyme will not be able to make a cut the reason is because uh, we know that proline side chain is connected with its own amino group now for proline this side will be n terminal this side will be c terminal that means amino group will be this side so proline side chain is connected with its own amino group and that will interfere in binding of the enzyme near the lysine residue so if proline is the next residue then also they will not be able to make a cut these points you should keep in mind while solving uh, the sequence analysis questions okay so another question from the same paper june 2021 so have a look at this question two experiments were performed on a peptide sample so they have given a peptide sample x and two experiments were done right now in experiment 1 the x was uh, treated with dithiothiotol which is dtt followed by blocking of free sulfhydryl groups so first was treated with dtt we know that uh, it is a reducing agent dithiothiotol and that will be cleaving the disulfide linkages because of which our cysteine residues will become free so we will be getting our sh groups now this treatment it yielded two polypeptides whose amino acid sequences are shown below so as you can see that upon treatment with dtt you got these two residues right now in the second experiment for, uh, that means what initially these two polypeptide chains were connected together right so because of which only you have got this uh, type of uh, freed up polypeptide chains upon treatment with dtt now in experiment 2 x was treated with chymotrypsin which is a protease that cleaves the carboxy terminal of aromatic residues as we just just saw and this amino acid composition of five peptides obtained from this experiment they are shown as below so upon treatment that is a second treatment uh, now here we haven't treated with dtt so when whenever you have such experimental questions you have to see the details properly okay in experiment 1 we have treated with dtt where we had these two polypeptide but in experiment 2 x was treated with chymotrypsin which means that here the two chains are already there together okay they are not separated in experiment 2 as the first one okay if we had uh, if we had in experiment 2 that x was treated with dtt and then it was treated with chymotrypsin then we would have these two different polypeptide chains to begin with okay but here we have the complete polypeptide chain in which the two polypeptides are joined together okay with disulfide linkages and this that was treated with chymotrypsin and uh, which cleaves the carboxy terminal of aromatic residues and different different sequences we have got now since we know that it cleaves near the Uh, uh, C terminal residue of aromatic residues. Uh, that means uh, aromatic residues means phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. I have written the single letter codes, so you can expect this to be the last in the fragment, isn't it? Because it will cleave at the C terminal, right? So um, here, let's say you have a phenylalanine here. So trypsin will make a cut over here. That means in this particular fragment, you can expect F to be last, like that. okay now this is not the sequence there is a comma in between so they have just given the composition they have not given the sequence in order from here you have to find out the uh, sequence but they have given the sequence here this is the sequence here but here is only the composition now how are you going to solve this first of all they are as asking what is the question based on the above results which cysteines are linked by disulfide bond the question is not to find the sequence the question is to uh, link the cysteines now here we have uh, some cysteines in in our uh, a subunit a polypeptide chain we have cysteine a3 that is at the third position and cysteine at the 6th position cysteine at the 9th position in polypeptide chain b we have cysteine at the second position and cysteine at the 8th position okay so based on this result which cysteines are linked together you have to find the question uh, answer for that now here uh, 
just remember the point which i was mentioning that this experiment 2 it was treated with um, x was treated with chymotrypsin so this was without dtt treatment okay which means we have the intact polypeptide chain not the digested one okay not the ones which is already been separated into two polypeptide now imagine if these two polypeptide chains we had treated chymotrypsin okay not the in intact one if we had treated this individuals one then how many fragments we would have got so first of all we can underline our aromatic amino acids because that's where chymotrypsin will be making a cut and as you can see here there are five amino acids present they are all in the internal place so uh, chymotrypsin will be able to make a cut in each one of them okay as i was telling the point that in external residues it will not make a cut now let's say they are making a cut in all these places right so here we know at the c terminal it will make a cut now in the top section you have four fragments 1 2 3 and 4 and in the bottom section you have uh, 5 6 and 7 so ideally you should get seven fragments if they would have been separate but you are getting only five fragments here they have they have given you are getting only five fragments which means that they must be uh, out of this two must be linked together with disulfide linkage okay so we clearly know that two of the cysteines are joined together that is why instead of having two fragments you are having just one fragment right so out of this seven two fragments are joined with other two fragments that's why they are counted as one okay so that's why you have just five fragments available so how are you going to do this if you look at the experiment uh, this um, diagram i have Uh, drawn here now these are the different fragments a b c d e f g right and um, just see what are the composition of the fragment for example first composition will be of fragment a right because we can see this alanine and phenylalanine we have already uh, marked our aromatic places so this would be fragment a fine now the second composition is a mixture of both fragment b and fragment d If you see here, we have in uh, composition two we have cysteine, but two cysteine residues are there, which means here only the cysteines will be linked together. Wherever we have two cysteines, means these will be a combination of two fragments. So, uh, composition two and four are combination of two cysteines. Okay, so we have the cysteine residue here, right? And uh, methionine is there, tyrosine is here, but apart from that, we have aspartame also. that means we have this aspartame here and another cysteine is here that means these two are linked together that means our a3 and a9 will be joined together okay then third composition will be our fragment g right so if you can see we have cysteine glycine lysine since we have only one cysteine which means it is individual this fragment is not linked with anything right then we have the fourth composition again it is a mixture of both fragment c and e because we have two cysteines so one cysteine is here and another cysteine is here right apart from that we have leucine and then we have two tryptophan so one tryptophan is here another tryptophan is here right another one is valine here so that means the a6 and b2 are also linked together and similarly we have the last one fifth composition which will be a fragment f so we have one one of each isoleucine phenylalanine and valine so this will be our fifth composition right so correct answer would be option 2 now moving to a very recent question from december 2023 right so the latest exam this was the question given an oligopeptide is subjected to amino acid analysis and found to have the following composition so in that we have tyrosine phenylalanine aspartate valine aspartame and methionine and the following statements they result uh, list the results obtained after analysis okay so they have already given what is this peptide composed of however this is not in sequence now these are the different treatments which are given and what is the result they have written in the sentence itself so the first one says the above oligopeptide is subjected to n terminal edmund degradation we all know this uh, particular technique is done to reveal the n terminal most residue it means that uh, it reveal tyrosine residue it means that tyrosine would be the n terminal most residue but anyways in all the four options you have tyrosine as n terminal residue only okay so this will not help us much this option a result 
Let's go to the next option which is trypsin treatment. Now it is written that trypsin did not affect the peptide, right? So if we know that uh, trypsin cleaves near the lysine and arginine, let's check if lysine arginine is present in the composition. Now lysine is not there but arginine is there. But still it is saying that trypsin did not affect the peptide, which means that arginine might be uh, the ext uh, exterior side. It might be present at the exterior side as I mentioned. Okay. So as you can see in option 1, it is the C-terminal most residue here. So definitely 3 cannot be the answer. Okay. Now out of these some answers will be there. Let's see now. Methanogen cyanogen bromide treatment yielded a dipeptide, a tetrapeptide and a free arginine. Right. So we know methionine cyanogen bromide cleaves near the methionine. So, where all this methionine uh, we have to see uh, individually, like if we take this first one, right? So, it can cleave over here, methionine, and then it can cleave over here at the C-terminal residue. So, if we have this particular treatment, you already got your answer because a dipeptide means valine methionine is a dipeptide consisting of two residues, a free arginine is this one. And a tetrapeptide is this one, that is tyrosine, aspartate, phenylalanine, and methionine. Methion, okay, so we have this uh, option one as the correct sequence. But let's uh, uh, let's see the other ones. If we have cyanogen bromide over here in the second second option, then you can see here that uh, you will get a free methionine. So this cannot be answer. If you have it here, then uh, you are getting two dipeptides. Okay, but here it is written you get getting only one dipeptide and that too it is a tetrapeptide. So, this is a tripeptide. This is also not answer. And here if you cleave here again, you should get a free methionine which is not the answer. That's why the correct option is option 1. But uh, I would like to tell here that a little thing is wrong in option D. But uh, I haven't checked the corrected, score, uh, corrected option. So, they should have dropped it. But if no one challenges, they will not drop the Exam, uh, drop the question okay so chymotrypsin treatment yielded dipeptide and tetrapeptide this is not possible because if you have dipeptide that means two amino acids and six uh, six amino acid uh, sorry four amino acid which is tetrapeptide so this uh, comes to total six amino acid residues but all of the option is showing seven amino acid residues okay so that is why instead of di, it should be tripeptide. This is the only thing uh, and then the answer will be correct because the composition, uh, this is chymotrypsin treatment. The composition of tetrapeptide after chymotrypsin treatment uh, of the tetrapeptide would be valine, arginine and methionine. Now in option 1 only, uh, just see where chymotrypsin, uh, uh, the aromatic amino acid is present. So, uh, tyrosine is there, but it is the terminal most residue, so it will not cleave here. Then phenylalanine is there, yeah, here it can cleave, okay. So, that's why you will have a tripeptide and you will have a tetrapeptide. Now, if you check the tetrapeptide, yes, it is matching with this. So, the sick composition is valine and then you have arginine and then you will have methionine. Two methionines are there, okay. So, this is a small mistake, but however, I don't think they have changed it. Here is the answer. I hope, sincerely hope that you have got the idea how to prepare for such kind of questions. Practice more from previous year questions. There are more of such examples. And uh, let me know in the comment section if you want uh, any particular question to be discussed. I will make another video for that. Thank you everyone.